What's up, guys? Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Roby Vaughn GL7, which is an 18650 tactical flashlight. And it's brand new from Roby Vaughn. Um, they reach out to me and provide this item free of charge for me to review it. However, the opinions I'll give in this video are going to be honest and exactly what I found when testing out the light. So, it comes in this box. This retails for $60 on Amazon. And this is my first Ruby Bun product. I am familiar with the brand. I've seen like the Aurora and stuff, which are very cool lights. So, I was pretty excited when they reach out to me. I mean, this is like the dream, like getting free EDC gear for making YouTube videos, so, you know. Um, but this is the light, you know, it comes in this plastic packaging. I've already tested it out, so I'll just put it back in here to show you how it comes. You get this, uh, I guess, certificate of authenticity, which is not filled out. The manual, a USB-C charging cable, lanyard, and that's it. Um, and I apologize if the camera is ever shaking, because I'm trying to set up with an arm and that's attached to my desk, and my desk is wobbly, so I um, hope it's not too bad. Uh, but this is the light, 18650 light. The first thing I notice about it, it's very large for an 18650 light. For some size comparison, this is an Olight SOR Baton 2 and a Workos C11. So, biggest and smallest. These all use the same exact battery, but I don't know. This light is just so much larger than the rest, and I don't know why. But. So the first thing I noticed, so this is basically, I mean, I would not carry this in my pocket. This is like the size of like a 21700 light in terms of the length and also the width. Not the width completely, but it is a lot wider than the 18650s, but pretty much unpocketable for me. This is like the biggest I would put in my pocket probably. So, yeah, that was the first thing I noticed. Um, I was actually doing some research on the light before. I received it, I looked at some pictures of it, and I also noticed that, well, th well, from the, the angle of the picture, it looked like there was only one of these things, so it couldn't tail sand, but that would be ridiculous, so obviously there are two, and it can tail sand. Um, but that also means no magnetic tail cap, but I, Olight is the only company I've seen that can do that, and that's for the Warrior Mini. Um, I also noticed for a tactical light, there is no crenulated bezel. So usually they have for striking. That doesn't really matter. I mean, I think crenulated bezels are kind of a gimmick. Um, but, you know, if you're going to be tactical, I guess you could have had that on it. Um, looking at the stepped modes here on the back. This, this does ramp and does step. So the step modes, I notice, have a very large jump. From 10 straight to 100 to 800 to the turbo. And there is no moonlight mode either. So that's also where I notice I don't particularly like that. When it jumps that high and plus has no moonlight. Um, I guess you don't need moonlight for like a duty light. But still, and also if you want to see here, 280 meters, throw 19,000 candela, 1.5 meter impact resistance, IPX8. So, it's all standard stuff. If you also are interested in the manual, it just looks like this. Piece of paper on the back. Graphic of the turbo mode. And I will show you um, how the UI works, which I'll get to. Um, I noticed, I mean, I mean, holding it, it feels really nice. Like, it feels very well made. The uh, anodized aluminum body is very nice. And uh, obviously black. Can't go wrong with the color black. Uh, the clip is not two ways, but it's just the standard, like, you know, flashlight. Well, you know, it's good to have it. In, and it is bezeled down, which is good. Uh, it's not a deep carry, though. And... Um, 
is also not a two-way clip. So this light has obviously two switches and it has onboard USB-C charging and the batteries included, so that's good. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting a battery separately or another charger. So you know, having everything all in one is also appealing. However, once I got the light and looked at the manual and tried to use it, I found out that the UI is very, very unintuitive and very cumbersome. So the first thing is this is a double click to turn on light. Double click and it turns on and goes. And then now we're in a stepped mode. If you want to cycle through the mode, you just tap again and again and again. And then you hold the turn off. A lot of people don't like hold the turn off. Uh, I only have one light that's hold the turn off, which is the EDC 05C by Lumentop. Um, which is, it's fine, but I don't know. A lot, of, a lot of people are used to just press on and then press off, but that doesn't do anything on here. So anyway, for the tail cap, you, so you have momentary, right? You have, when you have press, you cycle between, you can do turbo, you can do strobe and you can do, um, shit, SOS. One of these is SOS. But anyway, the point is when you want it to memorize every time, then you say you want turbo right every time so you hold it for three seconds and then you wait a little bit. And then now every time you momentary, it'll be turbo. Whenever you want to just stay in that mode, so say you're turbo, you just full press and then it'll stay in turbo. And then if you're from off, if you're full pressing, it will just go to strobe. So I don't need to show you strobe. I already, I didn't even say strobe warning, so it was pretty messed up, but yeah. So that's the tail switch. And then again, if you want to, now if you want to ramp with the side switch, you hold from off. It'll ramp up. But the problem I have with the ramping, as you can see, it just keeps going and it only goes up. You can only go up. You, so if you if, if you want to go back down, you can't. You have to keep going up. You only go up, see? And then once it hits the ceiling, then it goes back down. And there's no blink to notify when you're at the ceiling or at the floor and it doesn't stop you. It doesn't stop. So it just keeps, it's like, it just keeps going around in a loop. So um, it's not like a standard ramping like on the workhouse UI, you ramp up, ramp down, and it hits this, the bottom, hits the floor, ramp all the way up, boom, hits the ceiling. And you can't go up, and there you go, back down. And you can go back down or up anytime you want. Same with uh, Andero UI, this is SC31 Pro, Silfern. Go up, click and hold, go down. So. And when you hit the ceiling, it'll tell you. Or at least it'll, it'll stop you. It doesn't have to blink, but it'll, it'll, it will stop you. So um, that is another issue I have with the UI. There's also no moonlight mode, so there's no shortcut to low or anything. There's no shortcut to moon, I mean. And the turbo is a bit finicky. You can't double tap for turbo. Like You have to do it this way by setting the mode memory and stuff. So uh, yeah. Pretty disappointed with the UI. This is the tactical ring, which you can remove. You just take off the tail cap. This will come off. I honestly have no idea what this is for. So, I, I don't know what it's for at all. If someone could enlighten me in the comments, that'd be great. But I think maybe, maybe they get a better grip on it or something. Here, but I don't know. This we this is also weapon mountable, like on a rifle or something. It says, um, but yeah, I'm not sure what this ring is for. The tint on this flashlight is a cool white tint, so very similar to Olight temperature. Let's see if I can start this in a similar mode. Very similar to Olight temperature. The beam is not the same, but the tint is the same. I'm assuming the CRI is the same, so around 70. This does use a um, luminous SST40 LED, but I did not state the uh, temperature or the CRI of the light.
and the tail stand is possible, you know, but it also is a bit easy to fall over because of this design. You know, you're just ba you're balancing just on these two points versus, you know, just a flat surface. It's hard to to knock over. Um, but yeah, that's that's the uh, the good and bad, I guess, or just the bad. Now the good. <laughs> Uh, as I said, it feels great. There's, it's well made. The good, there's good machining. Like the threads are very, very smooth and well lubricated. And um, the batteries included. There's USB-C onboard charging, so that's good. Um, the, I mean, it's good, but it can be good and bad. Uh, obviously, they don't use proprietary batteries or chargers, which is good. But um, this charging port, which is pretty well protected. You know, this is a little rubber here, but this also presents the um, uh, ability for water to get in a lot easier. So, I mean, if you have a light that's just completely sealed and you charge this battery separately, then there is less of a opportunity for anything to get into that charging port. Um, it also comes with the cable, which is good. Uh, the OLED diffuser, does not fit because it's too wide. So this is an 18650 size diffuser. It'll fit the Warrior Mini, the S2R2, both the other lights I showed. Um, yeah, it does not fit, so that is, that is bad. Um, and the side switch, is, the switch feels good. This switch feels very good. And this is, uh, I've never had a light with this kind of, it's, kind of like, it's, it's not a rubber switch, it's like a metal switch. Um, so it feels pretty good. And I think the double click, there's also no lockout mode of this light, which is not good, but the double click turn on kind of services that lockout mode because it's kind of, you have to be very intentional. You have to double click. You just accidentally press it. It's not going to turn on. So maybe that's why there's no lockout because of that. Um, and it does have a very high output at 2000 lumens. So again, I'd rather show the step modes. But this is 10 lumens, 100, 800, and then 2,000. So it is a pretty high output, which is good. And uh, now I'm going to show you some beam shots. I took some outdoors and indoors. So you'll get to see how this beam stacks up against um, a couple other lights. And you can look at the tint difference, the beam difference. But what I like from this light is definitely... Beam wise, I mean, I don't, it's not the end of the world if it's cool white, but I like the uh, focused, really focused beam. So, <clears throat> excuse me, very focused beam. So you can kind of light up a target. I mean, if it's meant to be like a duty light, then I get it. You know, for EDC, it doesn't really matter up close and stuff, but that's what I like about the tint on this light. So now I'm going to cut the beam shots and I will get back to the end of the video. All right, welcome to the beam shot portion of the video. We are gonna start off in, let me ramp this, the lowest mode on the Rubber One GL7, which is 10 lumens. And I'm gonna compare with three lights going from warmest to coolest. And we will see what the tint is like compared to these other lights. So the first light is gonna be the Workhouse FC11 in 4000K. And that is at about, this is 100 lumens, so we'll be fun. This is trying to match it with the ramping. So as you can see, it's a lot warmer. Definitely less focused, but a lot, lot warmer. And this is a 90 CRI light, the Workhouse on the left. And this is unknown CRI. I'm going to say it's close to Olight tint and CRI, though. And if we go over here, you can see comparison. Olight, oh, not Olight. Oh, we'll be fun on the right. And work goes on the left. So, yeah, overall, a lot warmer light with a lot, you know, it's not as focused for sure. Okay. Next, we're looking at the Sofern S31 Pro. Oh, hold on, I'm in the window ramping mode. Okay, this Sofern is gonna be on the left. 
it is not turning on. Okay, sorry about that. All right, sorry about the noise in the background, but this so far is in uh, 5000K, so it's a little cooler than the last light, but still a lot warmer than this by comparison. So far on the left, oops, so far on the left, and where we going on the right. Over here, same thing. The CRI on this so far is not as high as the one on the Roby Bond. Last light we're going to compare to is the OLED S2 Arbiton 2, which is a 6500K light and 70 CRI. OLED on the left, Roby Bond on the right. You can see the OLED has the biggest, I guess, not a total flood, but definitely the least focus beam out of all of them. Just looking at the OLED, just one huge circle versus this. And compared to the last two lights, it's still a lot less focused. And look at the CRI here, about the same. And over here, we're going on the right, OLED on the left, covers a lot more area. This is just maybe like for lighting up one specific object. So overall, definitely see that the Roby Vaughn is closest to OLED in terms of tint and probably CRI, but definitely more focused than any of the lights I have. So this is, you know, more for just lighting up one specific target maybe, which is why this is probably more a tactical light than an EDC light for sure. And this is my first beam shot like video ever like so bear with me and probably messed up a bunch but yeah all right this is an indoor beam shot test real quick because didn't know if outside or inside was better so i'll give you both my first time doing it so roby vaughn on the right workhouse on the left and i ramped that too fast okay so it's still a lot warmer. You can see, same deal. I will switch to the sofa. In that was four thousand k the workhouse. This is five thousand again the sofa. Again, same thing. And lastly, the O light is two R two. In sixty five hundred k as usual so again same deal looks to be the same in terms of CRI maybe it, oh, I was very right sorry maybe a tad bit warmer I can't tell but very very similar um, hopefully indoor test was I don't know what you comment what you like better because so I can know to do indoors or outdoors in the future. All right, so those are the beam shots. I hope you enjoyed it. It was my first time doing it again, so uh, probably could definitely do better. But um, let me know what you think. And this is my first, you know, paid review. So it's pretty cool. Not paid, but free product review. So. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to upload more soon. Sorry I did not post for, like, over two months, but I got, like, over 200 subs, so very, very thankful for that. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching my videos, leaving positive comments and likes. It makes me feel great. Um, and yeah, so thank you for watching, and have a good one.